Hello, welcome to my presentation titled Controlling Roll Yacht Coupling with Aileron Placement and Wing Twist. Other members of my team include Josh Brinklow and Dr. Douglas Hunsaker. The motivation for this research comes from the adverse yaw effect, which is the tendency of an aircraft to yaw in the opposite direction as a roll. Some common solutions for overcoming adverse yaw include aileron rudder mixing, differential aileron deflection, or drag devices like Fry's ailerons. Another way to overcome adverse yaw is to use a special twist distribution on the wing with proper aileron placement. The Horton brothers were the first to implement this approach, and they developed various flying wings, a schematic of which is shown here. More recently, Al Bowers at NASA with his team developed the Prandtl D aircraft, which is a flying wing, and they proved experimentally that they were able to overcome adverse yaw using this method. And this is the topic of research that I will be presenting. These twist distributions are such that generate an optimal class of lift distributions, some of which are Prandtl's elliptic lift distribution or the bell-shaped lift distribution. This class is fully defined by the single parameter B3, this class is termed optimal because it contains lift distributions that will minimize induced drag for several different structural and aerodynamic design constraints, some of which are listed here in this table. Our problem set up for this research involves finding the aileron design that will give a certain roll yaw coupling when the ailerons are deflected for any given wing planform and B3 lift distribution. We started off with an analytic development based on lifting line theory and studied this in depth. We then moved on to incorporate certain software tools. Uh, we used mockup, which is a modern application of lifting line theory. We also used optics, which is a gradient based optimization tool, both of which are custom codes within the Aero Lab and are available on our website. The aileron design variables that we're allowed to change are the aileron root and aileron tip, which are the spanwise locations of the inboard and outboard edges of our aileron. They are shown in a normalized spanwise coordinate frame S, which is the percentage of semi-span, with zero being the root and one being the tip. Using these tools, we can determine how different aileron designs behave on a given wing platform and B3 lift distribution. For example, if we have a wing with a tip ratio of one, aspect ratio of eight, operating at the bell-shaped lift distribution with a lift coefficient of 0.5 and rolling moment coefficient of 0.1, we can get these results. This contour plot shows the induced drag and roll yaw coupling for all of the aileron designs for this scenario. The horizontal axis shows the aileron root location as a percentage of semi-span, and the vertical axis shows the aileron tip location as a percentage of semi-span. Um, this section right here that's grayed out uh, represents infeasible aileron designs because the aileron tip is inboard of the aileron root, which, which doesn't make sense. Um, the black contour lines here show the induced drag uh, from these different aileron designs. For any point on this contour, uh, the aileron deflection was allowed to vary to ensure that the rolling moment coefficient was met. And we can see that the induced drag is minimized somewhere around here with a gradual increase and a larger increase um, right around here. The Roya coupling is shown in the gray contour lines, and the Roya coupling variable is uh, negative when there is adverse yaw and positive when there is proverse yaw. And for this example, we see that we have adverse yaw in this range right here, where we have an aileron root kind of inboard and an aileron tip um, more outboard. But as we move more outboard, the roll yaw coupling decreases until it becomes zero, which represents a neutral roll yaw coupling. And then if we move farther, we have a positive roll yaw coupling, which is proverse yaw. So if we were interested in a neutral roll yaw coupling, we could choose an aileron anywhere on this contour line right here. 
um, but we could also try to minimize induced drag, in which case we would want to move the aileron such that the aileron tip was at the wing tip. Uh, this contour on the right shows the same data but viewed from a slightly different perspective. It shows the aileron center on the horizontal axis and the aileron width on the vertical axis. And we see that in this region near the neutral row yaw coupling, the row yaw coupling contour lines are nearly vertical, which means that the row yaw coupling is nearly independent of the aileron width and mostly depends on the, where the aileron is centered on the semi-span. If the center of the aileron is inboard of this location, there is adverse yaw. If it is centered outboard, there will be proverse yaw. Repeating this analysis on the Pranel D airframe shows somewhat similar results. We have the contour lines for induced drag, which behave in a similar manner as the previous example, and the same thing for our Roya coupling contour lines. Again, we show the neutral Roya coupling with minimum induced drag with this circle. And then the aileron design that the Pranel D aircraft actually use is shown with this X marker. And so our method predicts that their aircraft would produce a little bit of proverse yaw, which agrees with their experimental findings. Repeating the previous studies for a wide range of platforms and lift distributions, we noticed that the aileron design that gave neutral row yaw coupling and minimized induced drag always had the aileron tip going to the wing tip. So for this study, we forced the aileron tip go, to go to the wing tip, then for a wide range of taper ratios, aspect ratios, and B3 lift distributions, we solved for the aileron root location that gave neutral roll yaw coupling. And it is shown in this plot here on the right. These six different plots show different taper ratios, the horizontal axis shows the lift distribution, and the vertical axis shows the aileron root location, and the multiple lines show different aspect ratios. So for example, if we had a platform with a tip ratio of 0.4, aspect ratio of 20, and a lift distribution of negative uh, one third, we would want an aileron root at 63%, approximately 63% of the semi-span, and that would give neutral row yaw coupling. Anything inboard of that would give adverse yaw. Anything outboard would give proverse yaw. The vertical lines on these plots show the optimal lift distributions shown previously. Noting from the previous figures that the row yaw coupling is nearly independent of the aileron width, we can represent this data again, instead based on the aileron center, so that any aileron centered inboard of its neutral location will produce adverse yaw, any aileron centered outboard would produce proverse yaw. You might have noticed that these lines end abruptly. That is because for the given platform and B3 lift distribution, there is not an aileron design a single segmented aileron design that can generate neutral row yaw coupling. From our analytic development, we know that if we used a multi-segmented aileron, which has more degrees of freedom, we can extend the neutral row yaw coupling range to B3 values nearer to zero. One thing we noted from our analytic development is at a B3 value of zero, which is the elliptic lift distribution, there is no aileron design that can control row yaw coupling. The conclusions for this research show that it is possible to design for a certain row yaw coupling when ailerons are deflected just by using twist distributions and aileron placement. These twist distributions give an optimal class of lift distributions that will minimize induced drag when taking into account certain structural and aerodynamic constraints. We found that we typically want the aileron tip to extend to the wing tip in order to minimize induced drag. And we also note that this method is particularly well suited for sail planes and gliders, which can take advantage of these optimal lift distributions in order to improve aerodynamic efficiency, as well as being able to overcome adverse yaw 
from just aileron deflection. Thank you. Are there any questions?